The Great Dying was perhaps the single greatest extinction event to have ever occurred on our planet. Over 96% of all marine species and around 70% of all terrestrial species went extinct. The cause of this event has been, well, obviously correlated to some type of catastrophic event or events, with it most likely being related to volcanism. It was originally thought to have been caused by the Siberian Traps, which were a massive 2 million year long non-stop flood basalt eruption that occurred in Russia. It released massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, elevating the temperature of the earth. But it wasn't exactly clear if this was the actual cause of it. It just seemed so anticlimactic, I guess. But we might have finally found a culprit that caused or at very least greatly contributed to this extinction event. New research out of the University of New England has revealed a series of supervolcanic eruptions that occurred in northern New South Wales more than 252 million years ago. The Great Dying triggered the largest mass extinction event ever seen on Earth. This massive series of supervolcanoes released over 150,000 kilometers cubed worth of material in a 5 million year long period, beginning to ramp up in intensity around 257 million years ago, and continuing right up to and beyond the point that the Great Dying is dated to have occurred around. And the source of this occurred in none other than New South Wales, Australia. This video will cover the freak supervolcanic eruptions that occurred en masse over a 5 million year period in the upper northern parts of the state during the Permian-Triassic crossover point around 252 or so million years ago. And we'll take a look at how these eruptions, either directly caused or combined with the Siberian traps, to create a catastrophe as immense as what was witnessed during the Great Dying. New South Wales is located in the middle eastern portion of Australia. Its geological history is intimately tied with Victoria and Queensland, as the vast majority of the landmass that encompasses all three states formed largely in unison, when the entire eastern portion of Australia began to be slowly uplifted from the deep ocean floor that it once existed as, back when it was several kilometres east off the coast of Gondwana. Multiple tectonic events and orogenies occurred from around 550 million years onwards. The Paleo-Pacific Ocean would continually collide and subduct beneath what was once the eastern part of Australia, but in present day is more the middle part of it, with each collision and subduction a period of intense earthquakes, volcanism and mountain building, also known as orogenies, would occur. When orogenies occur, vast mineral wealth, especially gold, is deposited en masse with each event. The part of New South Wales that we will be looking at today has its origin at this 550 million year mark. This was the Neoproterozoic Cambrian crossover period, and if you're a geologist who's only interested in working in Victoria, New South Wales or Queensland, then you'd probably refer to this period as your cutoff point because there's no need to go any further back in time as these are the oldest rocks that make up the basement of this entire area. This video will need to be split into a few parts, as New South Wales is unbelievably interesting, far more interesting than I ever realised prior to making this video. I have so many areas that I need to cover, from the rift zone here to the orocline that occurred here, which is more than likely responsible for creating exceptional fracturing and buckling in the bedrock along with crustal thinning, allowing vast quantities of subduction-related melt to rise upwards from deep within the Earth, fueling some of the largest supervolcanic eruptions I've ever studied. These supervolcanoes were seemingly amplified in their power to the point that they were able to erupt at an unseen scale and frequency. Along with this very serious fact is a bit of a funny and odd occurrence, at least in my eyes, it blew my mind to discover that there are two areas known as Timbera in Australia, and both of them are located on a supervolcano, one in Victoria and one in New South Wales. What the heck? But I digress, so how did dozens of these eruptions transpire seemingly non-stop within such a short geological time frame of only 5 million years? And how was the magmatic batholith this large? Well, it most likely has something to do with the tectonic orocline that occurred here, which amplified the power and effects of the volcanism by feeding it abnormal amounts of magmatic fuel, 
which was able to rise due to the pronounced weaknesses that exist in the bedrock, where yet again the Pacific Ocean was subducting beneath Australia. I will cover this orocline in another video, as it's an extremely complicated topic. But it's associated with some of the most explosive volcanic eruptions on Earth, most likely because of crustal thinning or because of the severe buckling of the crust that occurs during these events, which allows abnormal amounts of magma to penetrate and rise through the Earth to fill the batholithic magma chambers. In the present day, the remains of this once massive active magma chamber can be seen quite clearly. It's known as the New England Batholith, and it's massive. It's larger than 100 kilometers squared in area, and this is the remains of a now extinct magma chamber. Over millions of years, erosion has whittled the land down around it, revealing a structure that once existed kilometers below the surface in its live state. In its heyday 250 million years ago, this batholith was a massive churning series of magma chambers that all intertwined beneath the earth. It was truly a conglomerate of chaos that existed at a spectacular size. A troop of supervolcanic magma chambers, all lined up, joined to one another, and ready to unleash pure hell. This batholith would operate as one massive team, to release wave after wave of destruction upon the earth, with it never really depleting much, even after major events would occur. The refeed rate of the magma rising up through the earth was seemingly never ending, as the Pacific plate continued to subduct, melt, and fuel this wave of volcanism. This massive 100 square kilometer area of volcanic rock is one of the largest batholiths in eastern Australia. This chain of tremendous caldera forming cataclysmic events released over 150,000 kilometers cubed worth of material in the 5 million years that they occurred when combined. It originally started life as a magmatic arc, and this is a normal occurrence when a subduction event occurs. Over time, a back arc basin developed. A back arc basin is a region where the crust thins. This thinning is related to the subduction that is taking place as well as the volcanism that is occurring, and it's quite complicated to explain. But the main thing to take away from this is that the crust is thinning, and this is allowing magma to easily penetrate and rise up through these weaknesses as the crust continues to get stretched apart in both directions. This volcanic arc existed here around 264 million years ago, and it was at this point that explosive subduction related eruptions occurred. It was also around this time that the previously mentioned tectonic orocline ended its journey, with it reaching right up here, which is, unsurprisingly, the point where the chain of supervolcanoes begins. The orocline itself was a 5 million year long affair, with it occurring around 270 million years ago, and ending around 265 million years ago. The timing of the two coincides with a massive ramping up of the volcanism here. And when we take a look at this area, and the location where the supervolcanoes erupted on gravity scans, we see this massive colour anomaly here. This exists because this region around here is thinner than the crust of the surrounding region. What we are looking at is the Back Arc Basin, and to the east of it is the ancient chain of volcanoes that made up the magmatic arc. But this finning is why this area is where these supervolcanoes were most active in their heyday around 257 to 252 million years ago. Now it's magnetics time. I'm going to use grayscale magnetics from now on, as I find them to be much better than the coloured variety at pointing certain features out. So under magnetics we see many overlapping circular features in a relatively short area, with many smaller ones dotted within the larger structures. Many of which were extinction level supervolcanic eruptions, that exploded with a ferocity powerful enough to smother the entire earth in sunlight reflecting aerosols temporarily lowering the temperatures by dramatic amount, and sending the entire food chain into a pandemonium, as photosynthesis temporarily got halted. Whilst halted, land plants began to die, animals that depended on those plants began to starve, and animals that depended on those animals that depended on those plants began to starve, and the entire food chain began to break down. But for the animals and plants that were alive in the ocean, things were about to get way, way worse. 
The entire food chain unraveled when the sunlight dependent plankton began to die off by the trillions, as the sunlight that it relied on to survive suddenly just disappeared. And when this happened, link by link, the entire chain began to crumble. And this was compounded by the fact that this didn't only happen once, but time and time again for a period of 5 million years, which is seemingly non-stop on a geological timescale. But this isn't what is thought to have been the final blow dealt to the poor life alive on Earth during this time. It's thought that it was the vast amount of carbon dioxide that was released time and time again by these events that culminated in a deadly global warming. And I mean that kind of makes sense right? Think about it, 150,000 kilometers cubed worth of material is a really really insane amount in only 5 million years. The last Yellowstone supervolcanic eruption released 1,000 kilometers cubed worth of material. That is ridiculous, it's way beyond unimaginable. So in my humble opinion, I believe it was the non-stop climate events that cycled back and forth from volcanic winters to extremely hot climates after the aerosols had dispersed that led to this mass extinction, which I definitely think was amplified by the Siberian traps. And it's also possible that the Siberian traps themselves were started as a direct result of a massive asteroid impact, so we can't rule that out either. Regardless of what it was, one thing is pretty obvious, it sucked to be alive during this time. And now let's take a few moments to appreciate the outline of many of these massive calderas here. These accurate topographic height maps convey what we otherwise wouldn't be able to see with Google Earth, or even with some drone footage, as we wouldn't be able to get high enough in the sky to appreciate the scale of some of these calderas. And this is exactly what they look like in real life. This is an accurate representation of the real life landscape. And here are a few of the largest ones I've found. In more recent times, when Australia passed over the Cosgrove hotspot, basaltic magma rose up through the many weaknesses these ancient tectonic collisions and supervolcanic eruptions created in the Earth's crust. As it rose, this magma melted much of these ancient volcanic rocks, altering the chemistry of the basalt by raising the silica levels, transforming a large portion of the basalt from fast flowing magma into thick viscous rhyolitic magma and this would later form some pretty explosive eruptions that occurred in the past 34 million years. But these would be nothing compared to the ancient supervolcanoes that once blew New South Wales apart, and more than likely contributed to, or even directly caused, the greatest mass extinction event that we know of. In future videos we're going to explore the vast mineral resources these eruptions deposited. In the present day, many gold mines dot the landscape here. But it's not just gold that these supervolcanoes brought up along with them. Many other rare and precious metals have accumulated as a result of the enormous magmatic systems that once churned deep beneath the earth here, and we are going to explore all of them. So this was the incredible New England supervolcanic complex, a truly cataclysmic series of volcanic eruptions that occurred at a scale rarely seen on our planet. It's an outlier and there's a reason, a very unique set of circumstances occurred here for this complex to exist, and we're going to save that fascinating story for another video so that we can truly take a deep dive into the past, and give the amazing story of its formation the credit it deserves by not skimping out on the intricate details that set it up to create one of the most explosive chains of supervolcanoes that have ever existed on our planet. Thanks for watching.